You were Aretha's first choice to play her in this biopic? Yes. We met 15 years ago. Uh, I had our initial meeting about me playing her. So this has been a long time coming. No pressure. Right? I feel like I've been holding my breath for I don't know how long. Marlon Wayans, welcome to the Hangout, man. I am really excited to talk to you about respect. Aretha, you do talk, don't you? Not just sing. I'd like you to call me Miss Franklin. You have to disturb the peace when you can't get no peace. Being a biopic, I don't like to say anybody's a villain, but uh, you, my friend, are quite a piece of work in this film. Uh, <laughs> how did you justify some of the things Ted White does in this film? I didn't paint, paint him out to be a monster I, because I feel like when you do that, you're only going to have one uh, one note character. And I wanted to make a human. And a human has great things about him and they have flaws. and he has great intentions. His intention was to marry Aretha, a protect her from her father, and, and help make her dreams come true. And the thing that was in his way is his own damage. He's a damaged man, and, you know, he has his issues. And those issues, you know, it, it brought him down. Insecurity and jealousy, and, and then he tried to lay hands on her because he wanted to control her. And so damaged people damage people. And I just wanted to make sure that I kept a little bit, a nugget of um, innocence in him. You have to love him and hate him at the same time. You had some really intense scenes with Mark Maron, and you both have fantastic backgrounds in comedy. Um, what was it like once the, the cameras finally cut and you guys were able to kind of bring it down for a second? Or did you keep it that hot? No, me and Mark, we, as soon as they said cut, we was like, whoo, <laughs> back to the jokes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mark cracked jokes all day. He just kept me laughing, man. He's just... Such a funny dude. Well, that's good. I really enjoyed the movie, so I want to thank you so much for your time. Take it easy, brother. I am here with uh, Jennifer Hudson, the star of Respect, and the reason why Aretha Franklin songs have been running through my head all day long. Thank you so much. <laughs> Is it true that you were Aretha's first choice to uh, play her in this biopic? Yes. Uh, we met 15 years ago. Uh, I had our initial meeting about me playing her, so this has been... A long time coming, for sure. Yeah. No pressure, huh? <laughs> no pressure, right? I feel like I've been holding my breath for I don't know how long. Well, I, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, but I was actually her second choice. Um, but you did a fantastic job. It was you. I did, okay. I don't have the looks. I don't have the pipes. So I think they made the right decision. <laughs> I really do. Um, speaking of pipes, is it true you had to sing on set every take? I I, re I sang live, so everything was live in the moment. Other than what was radio records, I'm like, if it's a radio record, well, we're going to record it like a radio record. But anything she did live in her life, we did live while filming. I love when you were interacting with the other musicians and, and getting to see a look at that process. I thought it was fascinating. Is that uh, your understanding of how it went back in the day of her kind of like, uh, you know, leading the team in that manner? Oh, definitely. Aretha was, you know, that's the thing with her. She was the conductor, the creator of the music, dictated it all from musically, lyrically, structure, you know, everything. Um, so it, I think a lot of people may not know that. Like she dictated and created all the music. Yeah. Now uh, you are, are going to be introducing Aretha to a whole new generation of, of, of music fans. Wow. Uh, that's got to be amazing just to, to, <laughs> to, to, to be a part of that and horrifying, maybe at the same time uh, to have to live up to that standard. But like, how does that feel? That is a dream of a fan of someone like that, to be able to do that and to help um, introduce it to other generations, like even my son and his cousins, they're young boys and they know who Aretha is from this experience, you know, and doing their research. But that's the purpose and the point of biopics of icons and legends like this to keep that legacy going, you know? Now, I anticipate a, uh, 
Jennifer Hudson biopic in the future. Do you have anybody in mind to play you? And do you have a title in mind? Oh my God. Um, I can't believe I'm being asked this question. I really can't. But I would say Sky, the young lady who played young Aretha in this. How is Aretha doing? Aretha's doing all right. Oh, she was fantastic. Amazing, right? Yeah. Definitely her. Okay, and what would the name of that biopic be? What would the name of it be? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You know what? You have me here. I I haven't, as you can see, I haven't even begun to think about this. Um, I didn't come here to ask easy questions, Jennifer. I see. Well, I, I think you got me on that one. I have no idea, but I'll think about it. Okay. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the, the movie. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Mark Marin, welcome. Welcome to my hangout. I am very excited uh, to talk to you about respect. Great. Uh, I me. think I'm on to you, though. You're playing Jerry Wexler, who was uh, one of the music producers for Aretha Franklin, and he, he's very prolific. Is this a ploy for you to get into future movies with like Led Zeppelin and Bob Dylan when they do their biopics? Yeah, I'll take uh, all Wexler roles from here on out uh, in whatever form. Uh, and also, I'd like some uh, free records as well, if go. anyone can set me up with that. I feel like you're playing 4D chess with this one, so I think it'll set you up nicely for the next uh, round I'm of ready. movies coming out. Uh, speaking of which, he, he's you know a very prolific music producer, so there's obviously a, a ton of material on him. Uh, as an actor, would he draw the line between you know uh, doing a, a faithful performance of this person and kind of making your own? I don't know how much material there is on him. I mean, I read the autobiography that was he did with uh, David Ritz, and I, I also uh, there's a little bit of video of him from back in the day, and also a bit on YouTube of him currently. But I definitely know a lot of the records, so I, I can see the work. I just wanted to honor the legacy of the guy and do a good job with it. Obviously, the the bigger burdens on Jennifer because you know there's not too many people in the world are going to be like, nah, I don't know if he really nailed Jerry, you know. But there's definitely going to be millions of people in the world who are going to be scrutinizing her performance, which was great, uh, a little harder. But, uh, I, you know, you bring yourself to it. You know, the, the difficult thing with somebody who has a specific dialect, which in this was a you know, heavy New York accent, you know, is to make it your own and not, uh, you know, make it a caricature, which was that was the primary concern. I wasn't I was OK with the emotional elements of it. I just love that there was like a positive portrayal of a, of, of a music industry executive, because it's always something like Bohemian Rhapsody. That'll never be a hit. Well, I think that Jerry was a very collaborative guy and in, in, you know, in he wasn't just an executive. I mean, he was one of really the founding partners of Atlantic Records, and he was really the working partner. You know, the Ertegon brothers were the money guys and the sort of intellectuals. But, you know, Jerry was out there you know, pushing records onto radio stations. I got a single by this new chick named Aretha Franklin. He was out there finding talent. And he was out in the studios with the talent, you know, getting the sound that he thought was right with the talent and getting the best out of them going back way back. He did, he recorded early Ray Charles stuff. So, you know, more than just an executive, he he was, I think, more uh, a great producer and, and a passionate guy about, you know, what the possibilities of music were at the time. Now, when we get around to making the Mark Maron uh, biopic, uh, what is the title and who who plays the lead character? Uh, it's uh, Are We Good? And uh, I'll I'll play myself. Thank okay. you. There you yeah. go. So 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 some de-aging for the younger role part. I get it. Why not? They have the technology. I can play right. myself so, up until I can't work uh, walk that well. Yeah. So you got that lined up. You've got the Led Zeppelin and, and Bob Dylan docs lined up. I think I think you're set for a good good long time. Yes, I'll be working for a while. Thank you for there the you career hey, advice. That's why I'm here, man. Thank you so much for your time, Mark. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks, man. I am so excited to talk to Liesl Tommy, the director of Respect. Liesl, welcome to my Hangouts. Thank you for having me. Now, one of the things I thought was interesting is that uh, Aretha Franklin, there are parts of her life that she was vague about. And I feel like the movie was similarly, I don't use the term vague, but like alluded to certain things. Um, was that a, a deliberate choice? Uh, you know, for me, I think that there is sometimes too much explaining in movies. Mm -hmm. And I think that audiences are way smarter 
um, than we sometimes give them credit for, and that their imagination is a, a powerful tool. You know, so you can you can give audiences enough information uh, with the visual, and then let them do the rest of the work. And I think it makes them feel more connected to the film because they're you know they're right there with us figuring it out. So that was you know that was my thinking, and also. Mm-hmm. I do believe that when you're dealing with some of the more difficult parts of her her life, that as a filmmaker, I was interested in a delicate approach. Um, I do have a a bone to pick with you. Um, I didn't get nearly enough Mary J. Blige in my movie. (laughs) How many albums have you had? Four. And no hits. Honey, find the songs that move you. Until you do that, you ain't going nowhere. Well, that means that I will have to make another movie with Mary J. Blige to, to take care of that. Well, that's an interesting point because the 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 movie only covers the first half of Aretha Franklin's career. Are you are you ready for a sequel? I mean, if the people want it, we'll have to see. I'm telling you, there's a whole period in the '80s. There's a, yeah. like you know doing a duet with George Michael, and if you need a George Michael, I'm just gonna like let me throw my hat in the ring. Are you uh, the guy? The, okay, good to that? know. <laughs> I got the I got the beard. I got the moves. Um, Lisa, I really, really enjoyed the movie. So I want to thank you so much for your time and uh, have oh, a fantastic a day. Thank you, Gordon. Great. Thank you. Singing is sacred. And you shouldn't do it just because somebody wants you to. What's most important is that you are treated with dignity and respect. You're special, Ray. You have a talent they call genius. You better take me. Think about what you're trying to do to me. How old is she? She's 10, but her voice is going on 30, honey. How many albums have you had? Four. And no hits. Honey, find the songs that move you. Until you do that, you ain't going nowhere. I need a change. I want to sing what I want to sing. You really like it? We love it. Re, 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 re,